Hey guys, good morning. Um, so today I'm working on the 94 Ford uh, OBS 7.3 IDI diesel that I have here that needs a lot of work. And uh, one of the things that I'm having problems with right now is uh, the new brake booster that I put in uh, a couple months back has failed. Um, I replaced every component in the brake system. Everything. Front to back. Every piece. Every component. Master cylinder. Booster. Uh, I bypassed the uh, proportioning valve under the, under the, on the frame. Um, new calipers. Wheel cylinders. All the brake components. And uh, everything worked great for a little while. Um, uh, even the vacuum pump's been replaced. And uh, for some reason here, the booster failed. Um, I've checked vacuum from the vacuum pump. I've got good vacuum. Uh, I've got vacuum through the check valve. So I'm guessing that the booster is the problem. So I picked up a new booster yesterday. Uh, I've got to paint it and uh, get that bolted in. So I'm going to show you guys how to... Uh, uh, remove your remove your booster hopefully without having to disconnect anything from the master cylinder I think I can I think I have enough play in uh, the hard lines there to be able to get the master off of the booster without too much struggle we'll see how that goes and I started receiving parts for uh, for some of the future mods that I'm gonna have to do here uh, the door panels in my truck are, are all destroyed you know my truck was a service truck and it was uh, used hard and uh, all the door panels are cracked and damaged in one manner or another. The doors themselves are also damaged and, you know, the metal structure is, uh, needs some love. So uh, what I'm going to do, I think probably next week, is uh, get these door panels together and uh, fix up the damaged holes that I have uh, on the metal structure on the inside door skin that uh, mounts the window regulators and mounts the door handle poles and all of that stuff, most of it's cracked or or uh, the holes are sloppy and the window regulators flop around in there. It's just a, it's a disaster. So uh, I've got a plan to fix all of those things. Uh, it's going to have to require a little bit of welding, a little bit of TIG probably, but uh, that should be no problem. And uh, so once I get that done, I've got something, a structure that I can use to mount my door panels to. And I've got to repair all the door panels, fix all those cracks. Uh, strengthen up the inside of the door panel with some fiberglass mat uh, and resin to uh, to give the door panel some substance so it doesn't crack again in the same place. Um, you know, door panels for these trucks are pretty expensive for aftermarket parts. Uh, I think the the panels themselves are I think four hundred dollars for a pair of them. So I don't have that kind of money. So I'm gonna uh, <laughs> I'm gonna have to fix what I've got. And I plan to recolor everything in the interior, all of the plastic components. I'm going to order a quart of plastic dye to change the color from gray to uh, tan. So it's going to match my whole new interior color scheme. I don't like the gray service truck look, so I'm going to, I'm going to dye the dash. I'm going to dye all the plastic components, all the vinyl. So uh, the only thing I'm not changing is the seat color right now because I plan to replace those seats with, uh, with some different seats that will be... Uh, a tan color, possibly leather. We'll see. Um, anyway, so I've got my plastic repair kit here, which will fix the cracks. I've got my resins for the fiberglass. I'm still waiting on the mat um, that I'm going to use on the back side of the door panel and the inside of the door panel that you won't see to beef up those areas so that they don't crack again. And I'm going to remove the, uh, the vinyl padding uh, that's glued to the to the door panel and remove that. I may just smooth them completely or uh, re recover those sections in vinyl and make it make it a little bit nicer in there. You know, it's pretty ugly and rough, and I'm gonna try and make a polish a turd here and make it make it a diamond in the rough. So we'll see how this goes. But today my task is the booster, and I'm gonna get to work right now.
what you'll see under the dash is pretty simple really uh, you got four nuts that hold okay this is the uh, push rod coming from the booster and connecting to our brake pedal the wiring here that I'm trying to get out of the way for you guys the wiring here is connected to our brake light switch so this this assembly here is your brake light switch that connects on the push rod uh, or that connects to the uh, pin on the brake pedal that the push rod slips over okay and uh, the brake light switch will only go on one direction so uh, you need to be mindful when you take that apart as to which way to put it back on so that you get it back on correctly and your brakes don't stick on if you put it on upside down your brake lights will be on all the time and kill your battery uh, so you've got four nuts up here that hold the booster to the firewall and uh, this piece of insulation partially covers that so just fold the insulation down out of the way and you can access the four nuts pretty easily pull those four nuts disconnect the uh, the clip here that sits over the that holds the brake light switch and the push rod onto the brake pedal pull this clip off like that don't lose it like I think I might have just done and uh, and then you can pop this assembly off uh, so now the uh, wiring's disconnected and the clip is off here you can just slide the brake light switch off like so okay so when you reinstall it you want to make sure that the circle part the enclosed side of the brake light switch is on the outside and the U for slipping it over the push rod is facing up so it'll go back on like so so there we go I gotta take these four nuts loose push the booster out fish it out from the uh, engine compartment and we're good to go so all I did was take a tape measure and measure uh, how much stick out I had on the old booster which was one inch and then uh, compare that to the amount of stick out on the push rod here on the new booster which is one inch as well you can see it's got a, a threaded portion here you uh, you have to hold the shaft uh, hold the knurled section turn the shaft loose and then you can adjust the length but like I said if your old booster was working fine with your master cylinder setup and you didn't have any pressure problems I wouldn't mess with that with that adjustment uh, but you can fine-tune the action uh, when the booster uh, pushes that piston in the master cylinder uh, this valve is your check valve it's a one-way valve vacuum comes in and can pull from the booster uh, but it doesn't allow air to go in so it's a one-way valve and uh, if these fail you know you won't get any power assist um, I checked it when I when I diagnosed that the booster itself was bad I pulled the hose going to the check valve made sure I had vacuum coming from my vacuum pump because the 73 diesel doesn't make any vacuum on its own uh, from the intake manifold of course so uh, it has an external pump that's belt driven that provides vacuum for these types of accessories so I checked here and I had vacuum at the hose I also pulled the uh, check valve out and checked that I had vacuum going through the check valve so and the valve wasn't stuck so uh, that's about it if if you have vacuum here and your check valve is working you just have a cracked diaphragm diaphragm or a bad uh, bad seal in your booster Okay guys, so I'm back from taking the old booster back uh, to the auto parts store there and that went well. Uh, the steering joints came in for the P48. So I've got, uh, this is our main joint here that's going to connect to our rack and pinion. It's spline, 36 spline, 3 quarter inch diameter uh, that will attach to our rack and pinion unit and it uses a double D shaft that then connects to an intermediate joint here and then another one of these 
joints with the double D shaft on both ends will connect to our steering column. I've got to remove the steering column and uh, grind it so that I've got to put two flats on it here so that our universal joint can slip over it. Though it does have two set screws, maybe I'll just put a countersink in there and, and set screw it to the steering shaft. Not sure. Uh, I've welded them in the past. You know, when it if it fails at some point down the road to the point that you need to replace it, it's just as cheap to replace the whole thing as opposed to, uh, you know, as opposed to just replacing a joint. And I like the security of having it welded. Uh, I also got in a, a rod end and a threaded bung that I'm going to use to support the weight of the steering shaft at this intermediate U-joint. So uh, I, I'm still waiting for the double D shaft to come in. And once I get that, then I can uh, finish up this steering setup on the P48. Uh, I'm also waiting for one of the steering column bearings. So that stuff came in, looks good, ready to go in there. Uh, the the booster install was pretty pretty easy, you know, pretty straightforward on the 94. I thought I'd document it uh, for the channel and for you guys that maybe haven't done a booster replacement before. I thought it might help you out. Um, pretty simple job, really, but makes a hell of a difference. You know, I uh, I can actually stop that big pig now, so uh, uh, it was worthwhile uh, worthwhile doing. There is a little bit of a play between the master cylinder and the booster shaft. I think uh, I could have adjusted that rod out a little bit and taken up some of that play. You want to adjust in very small increments. Um, and maybe at some point down the road I'll uh, pull that booster out and or, or pull the master cylinder loose and, and readjust that. So that's it for me today guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, please click like and subscribe if you like uh, Ford OBS content, if you like the P48 project. Uh, we got lots more stuff coming up, even if you like the 6.0. 6.0s don't get much love, but if you like 6.0s, we're going to be doing a lot of work on the 6.0 here coming up in future videos. And I've got to get that thing out of my driveway.